This is just an overview of the um, LED lamp box of my collection. Um, probably the most expensive uh, individual box just on the contents in my uh, collection because these things aren't cheap. But anyways, I've got a um, number of Philips lamps in here, both the um, this is about 60 odd lumens per watt, although the 8 watt versions are only, um, uh, this is a very old one, I'll get to in a bit. Um, well, although those um, 8 watt versions are um, only, I think, 57 something lumens per watt. Um, uh, these were the first of uh, Phillips, and this is actually a, a fairly early one. This is um, January 2011, and actually doesn't even list the uh, luminous flux rating of the lamp, which is um, rated at 800 lumens on it. Um, and these were reasonably decent for when they came out. These were 64 lumens per watt. They were 12 and a half watt lamps. Um, but in the, in the um, intervening couple of years, uh, there have been a number of um, strides made as far as improving the efficiency of just plain white LEDs, although they're not true white dye LEDs, they're like virtually all white LEDs, they're um, blue um, semiconductor dye with a um, yttrium aluminum garnet uh, phosphor, although, the, although I think it's the cerium dopant that makes it actually a, a yellow with green and red emission phosphor. The the the, um, the YAG is just serving as a um, as a um, as a as a, a framework for the um, for the cerium. But anyways, um, so yeah, these uh, were fairly expensive when they came out. I think this one I probably got at twenty five bucks a lamp because Home Depot was having some kind of a promotion, which is still going on. Uh, but they originally started started about forty bucks over here. And in Europe, they're substantially more expensive. Like in um, England, I think they're something like 60 pounds each, which is, you know, 80, 90 bucks, somewhere in that range. And I heard from a collector in Sweden that they're the equivalent of over 100 bucks a piece over there. So they're very expensive, I think, even now. Um, I've seen them as little as 18 bucks each, but that's a more recent, somewhat cheapened version that um, Connor Wolf did a teardown of. That only has three LEDs per lobe in the 12 and a half watt version. These much older versions have six per lobe, 18 LEDs for, per thing. The idea behind that is that it reduces the individual loading of each dot of LED and greatly improves the system efficiency. So I think they probably improved the LEDs a bit, which is why they could get away with that, but it's also cheaping it because it has your um, bomb costs in that particular respect. There's also an 8 watt version of it. That's I think these. No, that's the 17 watt version. I um, don't know how many LEDs are in there each lobe, but I guess it's probably six. That's um, 30 to 40 bucks each now. Um, but these only have these 8 watt versions only have two um, LEDs per lobe. There are Luxion Rebels which Philips owns, which naturally means that that's why they use them because they own the company. Um, then there's another version. This is a somewhat more recent version that Philips has come out with. Um, I think this has been out for a year or thereabouts, maybe slightly less than. Uh, this actually has a um, MCPCB with about 38 individual LEDs on it. There's there's spaces for 40, but in one of these that I opened up, two of those spaces were bridged with the uh, zero ohm resistors. Um, that's a 800 lumen, 10 and a half watt LED uh, lamp. Those are about 15 bucks each, I think. Um, that I got as part of a promotion with two pack. The other one of which I uh, cut open, although not completely because it still works. And I use it as a directional LED where there's any risk of touching it because there's about 120 volts exposed across that LED board. I think the line of reasoning because lots of these, like these um, Cree ones, which um, are very similar to what I, or at least. That one is, not, no, these aren't what kind of wolf did a tear down of, but they're fairly similar. One, that one's just the daylight version of what he did, and that's a 6-watt um, version. 
and um, uh, I think the idea behind that is they don't really care about the electrocution hazard because if you break open a regular incandescent lamp, they're electrocution hazard anyway from just the exposed uh, leading wires. But anyways, um, then there's this um, lighting science group lamp that has a 15. I think they're an Osram product if I remember some forum post on lighting gallery or something. That's uh, 6 watts, um, 450 lumens, more lighting science group lamps, that's a uh, modified, because it was crap on the LED when it, when it was made, so I just peeled the lens off and replaced it with a bit of um, plastic. Although I think these, these use um, isolated uh, drivers, so there, there's no direct electrical connection to the main, so there's no risk as far as electrocution, but that's just, you know, to keep the die from getting damaged because the um, it's in some kind of a silicone or something so the front of that die is kind of squishy could easily damage it then those are two more lighting science group um, 6 watt reflector lamps um, intended for things like a PAR16 type lamp which are ordinarily hideously expensive like these which are uh, PAR16 they're something like 10 or 12 bucks each new at least I got these from the one with that so but yeah uh, then there's some of these uh, um, L Prize lamps. These are the fabled $50 lamp that Philips came up with about a year ago. Although they've already been discontinued because uh, those Cree lamps, because those are 94 lumens per watt, but they spent about a year and a half developing them, and they were on the market for less than for about a year. You can still find them in some Home Depot things, but they have them on clearance at varying prices. Around here, they're still fairly expensive. So I just check, and I'm going to get a couple more because. I want to save some of those for um, historical purposes uh, because again since they're discontinued there's now a, a, a finite supply of those things um, then there are these um, Cree lamps uh, very similar to what Connor Wolf did a tear out of it's actually not potted which is fairly unusual because most of the, uh, the uh, supplies for these things are potted uh, and that just reduces the cost because this whole thing just snaps together and just a simple uh, off constant current offline switcher in there and just a, a formed uh, MCPCB in there to look kind of like a filament inside a um, inside frost and is actually I think acid etched not just the silicone although the silicone helps as far as if it gets broken um, and those are this which is the um, 6 watt a uh, warm light 40 um, watt GLS lamp equivalent uh, those are about 10 bucks each, and those daylight ones are, I think, 13 or 14. Um, they actually look a lot like incandescent lamps, or inside frost incandescent lamps in use. Although those, although I think they actually, in order to improve the color rendering index, they use two different color temperature LEDs, because I can see a slight difference, at least in the warmer one. I haven't really looked at the um, cool white one yet. Then these are some Osram Sylvania branded lamps. This one is um, 12 watts. I've got three of uh, the 12 watt ones and one 8 watt one. The 12 watt jobs I got for on clearance or those I got as a, some five bucks each from some promotional thing the store was running and those just have little boards of either three or six LEDs three in the 8 watt, um, six in the 12 watt under each of these lobes and under the end. And again constant current, current driver in there. This is a util Utilitec one which seems to be based on one of the um, Philips lamps. Uh, this just has a ring of um, ring shaped MCPCB with a bunch of what look like Luxion Rebel um, LEDs. Um, and then you can actually see a bit of blue glow through the end when it's in operation. That's just because there's a blue LED and a separate um, phosphor loaded pl plastic. And those are, I think, somewhere, somewhere in the 20 25 buck range. Uh, then I've got one of these horrible uh, Lights of America lamps. They're very cheap. They're marked as being American-made, but they really just assemble foreign-made electrical assemblies here. And this just has a couple of different circuits of these um, of really crappy Chinese uh, P1 and 3 quarter um, type LEDs with a uh, capacitive uh, reactance dropper which is horrible because uh, the capacitive reactance acts like a dead short to any kind of QRM or crap on the mains and that just feeds it straight to the LEDs which current spikes kill them etc. 
And uh, these are some really crappy uh, Chinese uh, no-name things I got off a of Deal Extreme many years ago. Because they're only like three bucks a piece, but again, that's many, many, many years ago. And I've got this really crappy, I think that's a, that's a steel base on the lamp. So yeah, that tells you, and again, same crappy capacitor dropper. And anything else of interest in this box? Um, and there's this, uh, another Utilitech lamp. This one, um, it's got uh, some kind of a custom 4-watt LED. It looks like it has two big 2-watt dies. This is a 4-watt lamp. And uh, the um, constant current driver is just somewhere in this metal section. With that um, heat conducting thing as well as the base. And the outer glass on this, this does have a glass envelope, doesn't get very hot, but the base does. So this one I only really use outside when it's really cold. And I think that's pretty much the thing. I think there's, oh yeah, there's one of these, another horrible uh, Deal Extreme and mains lamp. Crap. And this feet electric one, I, I think this is a feet branded, there's no markings on the lamp, but this is, um, Sold as a retrofit for um, um, night lights. And this one uses a resistive dropper, so on 120 volts it gets extremely hot, and I don't really recommend these for 120 volt use. <clears throat> However, that means it also works on DC, so I use this as a, um, when I do use it for things like 12 volt or 24 volts, I uh, use it on that because it runs fairly cold. I mean, I mean, it's it's only really useful as an indicator, but that's pretty much what I use it for. And uh, that's pretty much it for my LED box. Of course, I have a bunch of, um, probably a bit more than a bunch of um, other lamps, but that will be the subject of another couple of um, videos, because I need to do a organizational thing of this collection. But yeah, it's got about 3,000 lamps, so it'll probably take a while.